Guys, how are we doing? I'm just going to make this a quick and easy video. I'm not even going to get out of the car to do everything. Um, I can make a more in-depth one later if you guys want, but uh, this will cover everything. Ignore the Kit Kat wrapper down there, I know. Um, Alright, so this is everything. When you get your tuner, you will get the handheld, the OBD2 wire, and this one is USB to USB, actually. And they can both be plugged into the handheld at the same time. If you want, with the proper software, you can monitor everything on the computer all at once. Um, you can pass right through this and watch all your gauges on your laptop. Maybe we'll go into that later, not tonight. So what we're going to do first is, when you get this, the first thing you're going to do is take your OBD2 end, actually, and this part, this little notch part, is actually the bottom of the OBD2. You're going to take this and right under your left leg, by about your left knee, there's an OBD2 port in the car. Of course I'm explaining it and can't find it. There it is. Right there. When you plug it in, even if the car is not running yet, the handheld is going to fire right up. And I can't read it because my phone's an idiot, but uh, right now it just says displaying DTCs. Uh, what that actually does is that reads engine codes. If you ever have a check engine light, it can tell you the problem. So the first thing that you're going to do immediately after you get your handheld from Jerry is you need to turn your car to the on position but not actually start the engine. I have the push button start. Um, there's two different ways to do it. If you have the key, you can simply change it to on. If you have push button start, you have to push and hold for about five to 10 seconds and everything will power up without the car actually starting. All right, from that point on, you're gonna go to your handheld. There we go. And you're gonna scroll down to read one. And it should say E80, that is GM4 cylinders, and you're gonna press the center button. File system full. Oh, okay, that's from me taking um, logs on the way here. That's fine. But what it will do is, yeah, I know, <laughs> I made it mad. Anyway, what it will do is it will take a few minutes and it will read your stock tune off of your car. And it will actually save it to the handheld. It takes a few minutes, it gives you a percentage bar, and when it's finished, it'll tell you to shut the car off. It'll tell you to kill the ignition. And if you hit the button and shut everything off, you hit the center button again and it will give you a timer. That's basically how long you have to wait before you turn the car back on when it's done reading. Uh, I don't really have to because mine didn't do anything, but that's fine. Uh, the next step we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to pull the data files off of this onto here so they can be emailed out to Jerry. Alright, so your very next step is going to be to get your favorite computer out. I'm using a laptop. You can use a desktop. doesn't really matter. And you're going to go to your favorite internet browser and search for EFI Live. When you find it, their main web page looks like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to come down here and click this download button. This is the software you need. I downloaded the V8 version, which is fine. That's all you need to do, all your file transfers and things like that. So you're going to click download V8. I'm using Google Chrome, so it'll come down here and do the download. After that download's finished, which mine already has, you're going to walk yourself through the installer. You'll click run and install everything. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then it's going to give you two things on your de desktop that look like this, if it will focus. One says EFI, EFI Live Explorer, and the other one says EFI Live Scan and Tune. We're going to use the EFI Live Explorer. That opens up the ability to actually talk to your handheld with your computer. Looks like this. Now I have my handheld over here, and I have the USB cable plugged into the bottom of the handheld. Plug it into the laptop here. And you'll hear Windows little jingle saying that it's connected to something. And if it doesn't automatically, mine sometimes does, but if not, you're going to go down to this left-hand corner here and click the left of the two handhelds, the one that looks similar to ours. And after you do that, it should get a check mark. Yep, there you go. There's the check mark that's saying that it is logged into your handheld right there. And you're going to come up here, and your tune that you read off will be in this read folder. Now, mine's empty because, as you saw, it didn't work. Um, under scan here, I do have two data logs right now. That's from driving home. That's why, oh, I have four. 
That's why there's no room for the tune to be saved on there. But that's just fine. In this read folder, you're going to have your tune, and it'll be right here. And it will probably say something along the lines of... Actually, I renamed mine, so I don't remember. But that's alright, it will be the only file in the folder. And then the next step will be, anywhere on your computer you can create a folder that says whatever you want, or you can use the folders that EFI Live made for you. It doesn't really matter as long as you know where it is. My personal one is actually right here under my documents. Oh, I'm an idiot. I moved it to the desktop for the video, and I forgot. But I have a folder called Tunes. It doesn't matter where you put these, as long as you remember where they are. Mine's right on the desktop, so it's easy to find if I were to lose it. But under Tunes, I'm going to open that. And there's everything that I have saved. All you're simply going to do, yeah, Stock Fool is my stock one. The logo will look like that on the file down here. All you're going to do is drag and drop that into any folder anywhere on the computer as long as you remember where it is. That is the file that you will send to Jerry. When you order your tune, he actually sends instructions to walk you through all this. I know I'm a little choppy. I'm just trying to get this done. Quick and easy explanation. Um, I can answer any questions later. But that's the file you will send to Jerry, and he will send you back um, I have this one, I call it Bass Tune, I renamed all mine just so I knew what the difference was, but he'll send you back a tune. When he does send that tune back, you will save it to your computer, I just chose to use the same folder as everything, and you will find it in this EFI Live Explorer and simply drag it and drop it, like this, down into the tune folder. That part is very important, if it is not in the tune folder, it will not work. You drag and drop, and mine's already in there, yada, 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 but it will put it in there for you. And then there you go. Those are the tunes on my handheld. That's about it. Next step, and final step, and the quickest step, is going to be to install the tune. Now the final step is we're going to plug this handheld device back into the car using the OBD2 cable. I never moved, so didn't really have to do that. And it will light up again. And I have my car back in. It's called service mode, but it's on the on setting. Car is not running. And you're going to scroll down. Come on. There we go. Scroll down to program one. And it will have whatever you named the tune when you saved it from Jerry. If you don't rename it, I believe it just says BNR tune. I named mine bass tune. You're going to click on that. And it should... Actually, the first time you do this, it's going to ask you if you want to license your vehicle. All that does is it pairs the handheld to your car. I almost forgot. Simply click yes, and it will go into this setting, and it'll say flashing and give you the percentage. Uh, it does not take very long to do this. Mine might run even quicker because it's actually the tune that's in there right now. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but it only takes a matter of a few seconds. And when this is done, it will prompt you again to turn off the key and you will hit OK and it will give you a wait timer again. And as I mentioned before, that timer is how long you have to wait before you start the vehicle after the flash is complete. Well, we're cooking now. And actually you'll notice the vehicle kind of resets when it's finished. I heard my fuel pump cycle and it's reminding me again that it's cold outside. And you'll hit the OK. Waiting for 15 seconds. I've got to shut mine off. And that's it. The handheld is done. Your tune is in your vehicle. But the very next step is somewhat important just to make sure that you have no problems. That is done. The tune is in the car, complete and everything. But Jerry recommends, and I do as well, just to make sure you have no problems, you're going to find, I believe it's above the read and write, record data. Right there. That's how you make data logs. Once the vehicle's running, you can come to record data at any time and hit OK. E80, yes, that's your motor. 
Recording engine data. Please wait. Creating log file, starting scanner. There you go. You're creating a log file. And during this, at any time, if you want, you can scroll down through here and look at all the information that's happening to your vehicle right now. A lot of it is very useful if you know what it is. The main one that I like to keep an eye on is KR. That's knock, that's bad. If this ever goes above zero, you probably have a problem. Now keep in mind, there is such thing as false knock. Sometimes mine on the tune spikes up to one just for a split second and drops back down to zero. I'm ignoring that. It did that on the stock tune. There's not much you can do about that. But if this spikes up to say five or six degrees while you're doing a full throttle pull, then you do have an issue and you should probably set the vehicle back to stock. That's the one thing I like to keep an eye on. But uh, when you decide that you've done enough of your driving, you can come up to exit, it's the top option, and hit OK, and it will save the data log. And that's it. Same step as before, you can plug the handheld back into the computer, and the data log will be under the data folder in the handheld, and you can pull that out and send it to Jerry, and he'll let you know how your car is running. That is, without a doubt, the safest step. It's not required, but highly recommended. If you are to reset your car back to stock for any reason, you can do that if you're getting knock and it's worrying you, or you can do that if the car is just not running right, and let Jerry or anybody at Bad News Racing know about the issue and they can deal with it. They can help you deal with it. That's no problem, but what I like to do is I have my stock tune actually saved to my handheld, and it is the biggest file on the handheld. That's without a doubt. It's very large when you pull it down, but that gives it the ability to do a full upload. Uh, you'll notice that my other tunes have normal program, but under full I only have stock. It's because it's such a large file, but it has everything. It will set your car back to factory. You simply drag and drop that file back in the tune folder, as I showed before with the first tune, and you hit OK here just as normal. Now this full overwrite is the proper way to set the vehicle back to stock. It will take probably about 10 minutes. I haven't personally done it, but uh, it takes much longer than the normal programming. Um, a lot of you will like to do this before you take the vehicle in for service, stuff like that. If you have any problems, do that. Definitely the best option if you're running into issues. And then everything left on the actual handheld itself you can delete the scan files which is all the data logs and stuff if you don't want to delete them with the computer which I did um, you can delete them right on the handheld that's not a problem and then there's your serial number and all kinds of that stuff so that's about it if you have any questions let me know I know this video was painful and long and hopefully it just answered any questions that you may have my phone's being a jerk so that's that but uh, I can make chopped up versions later, that's all right. It uh, won't bother me one time or one bit to go over this as many times as I have to, as long as you guys know how to do the process and make sure that your vehicle's running safe. So uh, have a good night, guys.